Good morning, Rob. Great to see you this morning. Bill, it's my pleasure. Yeah. And it's great to see our other co-host, Mike Hornby. I was expecting to see him on crutches, maybe with an amputated leg, uh, in a wheelchair, attended by all these lovely nurses just trying to make up for the, the injury that he did the other day. The team of medical experts. It's yeah. a miraculous recovery, Bill, from and, what happened to him last week. Good That's morning, Rob and Bill. <laughs> yeah, you guys made that sound like I, I chopped my leg off. <laughs> it was just a, well, I uh, wonder whether we're getting a uh, GoFundMe time tour, either <laughs> yeah. for or, or either that to get money or get sympathy, one of the two. So my 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 mother got freaked out because she listens to the show yeah. and heard that first through you guys, uh-huh. and and it was uh, not a pleasant <laughs> phone call with my mother when when she called me, berating me about what I did. I'm like, it was, it's just a scratch. It's fine. Well, my, my, <laughs> you sent us a picture with some <laughs> serious <laughs> gashes on your leg. It looked a lot worse than it was. Yeah. Uh, of course, we felt sorry for you. But <laughs> no, you didn't. No, don't no, lie. No, don't no, lie. No, <laughs> but we were mostly using it as an opportunity to kid my kite okay. for not for giving you a tool without proper instructions. <laughs> yes. Uh, height made a point of saying he now lends out the saw without his own personal instruction or use of the saw. You do it yourself. You know, when I asked Mike to borrow the saw, he said, what do you know about power tools? This was a <laughs> reciprocal <laughs> saw. Yes. <laughs> and what was your answer? Um, I said, of course. I, how hard can it be? I mean, really. You press the button, you cut stuff. <laughs> the problem is when you cut through things, it keeps cutting. <laughs> I mean, yeah, until, it, until it gets to the body. Yeah, when it gets to flesh, you take your finger off the trigger pretty fast. <laughs> I guess after all, if they were that dangerous, they wouldn't sell them to just anybody, right? You can buy them at Lowe's. Anybody yeah. can buy one. <laughs> <laughs> so I made the comment that when uh, Mike barred the reciprocal saw, someone should have told him he's not supposed to use it on his own leg. Yeah. And apparently that's what spurred some of the phone calls that you received. So Mike comes in and left at 10 o'clock, curses at me and said, you ruined my morning. My phone blew up with everybody asking if I cut my leg off and if I was okay. Yeah. My wife was down in Myrtle Beach. She even called me. I'm like, what, what happened? I said, nothing. It's a scratch. I just, it lo- but, but you have to admit the photographs you sent Gruesome. look pretty gory, they, they, they? they look worse than what it actually Gruesome. was. Bill I, probably looked like some shark attacks yeah, pictures you've seen attack. on Except the big seas. You still have his leg. That's still, it. Yeah. To this time. Yeah. Uh, you were uh, in Charleston yes. over the last weekend here and uh, Monday and Tuesday back now for, from interim sessions. Yep, came back yesterday. Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I, we had Chuck Hurst on the program. He said because of a prior commitment he couldn't attend. Was it well attended? Um, No. Oh, it was... I, I, I would say some of the committees were well attended. I think um, some had a hard time getting a quorum. I would say I saw maybe 60% of uh, the House there. Mm -hmm. But if you aren't on a committee um, that was meeting, if you're on just minor committees, there was no sense in you actually going anyway um, because they didn't meet and there was just nothing to do. So I had two two meetings. Uh, The first one was uh, well attended, but it lasted four minutes. Which meeting was that? That was the economic development. We had nothing on the agenda. Um, It felt like a complete waste for me. Um, I felt, you know, I drive down there five hours, Pull into the meeting, sit down. Mike, there has to be planning for this. They have to have some anticipation of what's going to be on the agenda. Why would they call an interim uh, for all the members mm-hmm. to come down without anything to do? So um, I, It's I, expensive. Yes, it is expensive, and that was my question um, after or during. But you know, my meetings were a day apart, so I did voice my concerns that you know, if we're going to come down here, find something to put on the agenda in my opinion um it, it's a major committee uh, let's treat it like a like major committee let's make sure we have presentations and things like that that we can listen to and i'll say the opposite for education committee it was a very informative meeting and uh i think we're going to get some really good stuff out of the meeting that we had yesterday it was uh it was probably one of the better um presentations a gentleman a hunter from plasma games um has developed this and they're doing this down the carolinas uh developed this chemistry um uh, teaching ability through gaming so it's kind of like uh roblox versus uh minecraft but instead of creating fantasy swords and armors you're actually creating real things using chemistry because they found that uh, we have a huge shortage in the United States of chemical engineers. It's one of the best paying jobs. 
um, you know, right out of college, you're sitting around two hundred thousand um, dollars. And if we can think forward, maybe utilize this gentleman's company, I think we can be at the front run of that. And I was really excited to see the uh, the presentation from Plasma. Now, with interims, no votes taken. No, no votes. Just, just information. It's just information. Yeah. I I don't know about any other committees if there was any voting done. I know there was a lot of presentations. Uh, Mike Height went to a corrections presentation. Um, so there, this is where the work gets done for next session. Um, so, uh, you know, I think... Uh, so in net, there was value. Yes, for me there was value because of the education um, meeting yesterday. I thought I, thought I kind of raised my spirits a little because I was a little down on, on, on the first day. Okay, what came out of corrections? I, I don't have specifics, Bill. Again, I, I, I left right after the education meeting. I didn't get a chance to have a conversation with Mike uh, about exactly what he heard and what he saw. I know there was some stuff in DHA, in the health committee, the, with the new software they're using. There's some vendors that aren't getting paid in time. I had many conversations about the Cacapin uh, State Park RV, RV proposal. Um, you know, let's let's stop there just a yeah. second, Mike. Because, and, and, uh, before you go further, Bill, just a note on corrections. Mike Height will be in Friday morning at eight o'clock, co-hosting with you, great. and we'll use that as our segment to catch up on corrections. That, that's good. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, uh, Craig Blair has been very, uh, uh, very open and very, uh, uh, very vocal that the 350 campsites will not happen. And I think everybody locally uh, agrees that. Uh, was there, was that the gist of the discussion that you had with your colleagues? Yeah. The, the conversations I had with my colleagues were, while we understand what Craig's saying, and it's got to come through the legislature. The point of it is the RFP still has that up to 350. And I believe one of the proposals that is coming is of that size um so that is what uh has it was at the major topic is like well the the person that is most qualified or or, or thing they, they are looking at that number now i do believe that this still has to come before the legislation we have to get, get things passed and, um and the dnr is just trying to get proposals so. but the rfp has 350 in there. Yes. That's, that carries quite a bit of leverage with it. It sure does, mm -hmm. and, and that's what's freaking people out, is why would the RFP have 50 to, I think it's 50 to 350, yeah. um, and what would that developer or that private entity bring to the table too? Now, I'm, now you've got me confused, Mike, uh, that uh, RFP's out, and the West Virginia uh, uh, DEP is going to make the decision. Why would... I think it's the DNR. DNR, okay, yeah. sorry, sorry, DNR. You're right. Uh, why, what role would the legislators get in at that point in time? So, from what I, I believe is they would still have to report to the legislator and say, this is the plan that we have been given, these, these are the plans that we have um, accepted, or this is the plan we have accepted. And they would come back and say, this is, this is what we've got. Um, now, some people are concerned that, that we won't have that ability so it's all very up in the air uh, how right could now. you have that ability uh, again i sit on uh on, on agriculture we did not meet because we're a subcommittee um but i anticipate a meeting uh regarding this in more detail and, and it's all just hearsay at this point we've not talked i've not talked to anybody directly with the dnr or anything like that I'd be curious to ha hear what uh, uh, Joe Ferretti and uh, Larry Schultz and Mike Carl may add uh, if we have if we talk about it on Friday, but I think once once the RFP has been let, that that the uh, the vending the vending group has no capability at all of changing the conditions well and it, so if somebody came in with 350 there's nothing that dnr could do about it well if you have multiple bids yeah uh, if multiple bids so one thing, and that's they the could, thing yeah. is if we have multiple bids i think we're good because they get to choose uh, but it specifically said and i think i sent it to rob on friday um where the dnr put out the statement well, they're they're taking um bids or proposals because there is a a uh, caveat in there that they have to do some work within the park to to, to help they, out. They, you're right. They do choose between the various vendors, uh, but if they, but I do not think they could 
not choose someone with 300, the one that submitted 350 bids just because they don't like the 350 bids uh, or lots because it's, it's, it's in the RFP. But I think they can negotiate with the parties involved to get what they want or they want to see. I think that's why they left it pretty broad and open um, to, to say, hey, we, we're willing to look at small but we're also willing to look at the maximum. Okay. And I don't know who determined the maximum or, or the minimum, but um, I, I do know it'll be a hot topic if the DNR um, director chooses something Bill, giant. Uh, if, you, yeah. if you have a question to wrap up on that, I want to move on to the education. I, I was just going to say it's a lot more, it's more, more murky and uh, and muddy right now than it was what we, when we heard talk to Craig Blair the other day. We thought Craig Blair said it was off the table, and you're saying it is not off. Well, the table. Well, and again, I, I I'm just looking at the RFP and looking, yeah. at, and that's what our, our fellow House members are, are saying. Well, it, it says it in plain writing here, yeah. 350. So. Yeah. All right, Mike, you said you had an education committee meeting that yes. was pretty productive yesterday. Sheriff Nate Harmon is holding because I know he had some questions regarding some of your discussions about school safety. Uh, Nate, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead with your questions to uh, Mike, who was in the Education Committee meeting yesterday. No, I really appreciate the the opportunity. So, you know, uh, Mike and I have had some very fruitful conversations about this topic. Um, I, I am curious as to what came out of the Education Committee in terms of uh, funding conduits, uh, with our surplus that we have, any discussion on that, any projects coming up uh, in the future. I mean, I know the school levy uh, had, had passed. There was $9 million dedicated for safety upgrades, but uh, all of which takes time. Uh, we are very far behind in, in the upgrades that are needed within our school system. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious as to uh, the SRO funding, the additional SROs as we grow. Uh, I'm trying to get ahead of it, and I wanted to see if – there was any uh, fruitful conversations that came of that. So uh, we, it was a joint meeting on education at a set agenda. Nothing like that was discussed officially in the actual meeting. It wasn't like we could uh, raise our hands and, and bring up topics. I, I will say this, Nate. There are many fruitful conversations going, going on regarding this specific topic. I know I've talked to you. Um, about it quite a bit. I have many conversations going on with other legislatures because uh, we really do think this is a, a priority for the next session. Um, it's all going to be about trying to find who funds, where the funds come from, and how they get done. Uh, we have many different options, um, and those are, those conversations are happening behind behind the scenes, if you will. Um, because mm -hmm. everybody has a great idea. We've just got to all kind of come together and, and put the actual plan together. I am working on a piece of legislation uh, that will address that. I'm, I, I don't have all the specifics just yet, but I'm working with uh, the county as well as um, the school uh, school authority and in, in, in trying to get all those pieces put together so that we can have uh, across the state school resource offices. Nate, what do you estimate it would cost to secure Berkeley County schools? If you were to put an SRO in every school, 32 schools, and we're not counting what I'm surprisingly finding out these daycares because this past spring break, um, you know, daycares are full. And, uh, you know, they're, they're subject and, uh, to this same uh, horrific situation that we're dealing with, uh, you're talking well over $2.2 .2 million just for our county if you wanted to put uh, a school resource officer in every school. Now, I know one of the senators, I, I uh, um, forget the actual bill name, but it was a Senate bill promoting um, a guardian-like program. Um, you know, I've presented this uh, long ago, uh, even before coming becoming sheriff, and, uh, you know, we're, we're broaching the idea again, and it just seems like we're talking about it a lot, but there's just been no no traction. I mean, you've got veterans out there that are obviously frustrated, fathers that are obviously frustrated. There are pro pro father programs that I just saw, uh, uh, you know, uh, fa guardian fathers or, or uh, armed fathers for school safety type of groups that, uh, you know, eventually they're going to come on school property and have, uh, you know, be, be uh, armed or, or they're going to get so frustrated that veterans are going to be standing across the street armed 
And, you know, it's going to run amok, I'm afraid. It, I mean, good intentions, well intended. But if we don't get ahead of this soon, and I'm talking very soon, uh, in terms of uh, promoting a, a program uh, that better secures our schools, then we're going we're gonna to have a bigger problem. I think uh, we did pass out of education the Guardian uh, program that you're talking about. It, it died in judiciary. Um, it, mm. We just ran out of time. It wasn't anything that... Uh, was ill towards the bill. It just the you know, judiciary gets uh, gets overwhelmed. I, I will say yeah. this, though, Nate. I, I think 32, and you and I have had this conversation before, 32 is a great number to shoot for, but if if I could fund 10 or 12 for you, I'm sure you'd be extremely happy with, with that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and every county is going to be a little different. So we've got to kind of come up with a formula where the sheriff and the county council and the, the local board of education can can go all right for our county we need 12 we need 14 we need this will take care of the situation and will make our school safer um so i I think we need to leave that a little open-ended uh i don't think we could say every single school and daycare has to have a full-time resource officer right yeah right yeah that's the whole concept between behind floating sros they're not specifically dedicated to a school as they are more so a district area i was in conversation with the senate senator that 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 sponsored that bill uh and and my biggest issue with the bill uh, i agree with the whole thing is that it should have oversight by the local sheriff because if you think about it these gentlemen or or women who have these backgrounds are vetted and uh, are trained very similarly to the deputies. So when we meet in a bad situation, there's no question in terms of tactics and training received and proficiency with a firearm that is all overseen. There's oversight. And, you know, that's the advice I offered the senator. And then I I can tell you right now, I'll I'll fully support that same bill uh, next year. And I'm going to try to get traction on it uh, come uh, the fall. Sheriff, you mentioned uh, the $2.2 million for the uh, SROs. Uh, that does not address the hardening aspect of the, of the buildings themselves. You've mentioned several times that the buildings need to have special attention. Uh, is there, has there been a survey one of done what we need to harden the building, and has that been costed out? I'm having an emergency meeting today with uh, the deputy superintendent and the, uh, and the director of pupil services. Uh, for issues that I have uh, uh, consistently found within the school system. Um, I have been offering advice since taking office, and um, I am at a point where um, uh, tabletop conversations are over, and I want to see, um, I want to see movement. I want to see actual traction. I understand that there's been educators asking for funds and subsequently denied funds. Uh, for things such as, you know, old uh, building door hinges that when open and they come back, they're so old and, and dilapidated, they don't secure the door back. So if an educator's not paying attention and someone comes through the door, then, you know, that door's uh, lodged open and will remain lodged open, whether it's a side door, back door, or front door. Here's the worst part. And I got sick to my stomach when I actually saw a double door system, one with glass, tempered glass, and the other side of it, apparently the window, the glass broke, and they replaced it with plexiglass. I'm not going to say where or anything like that, but I'm going to tell you that is unacceptable. I could literally push that in with my hand. from, And this is an exterior door into a, uh, a school uh, where we need to really, really focus uh, attention on first our younger generation, and it's, it was a sad thing to see, and uh, and it's unacceptable, and I'm not accepting it, and I'm going to push this issue, and needs addressed. You just had, they've just had that levy, and uh, you know I'm not you know instead of twelve thousand dollars worth of paint, why don't we have twelve thousand dollars worth of upgrades in the areas where they're needed the most? Let's prioritize. They've been given this advice we've been at the table yeah and i think um, the legislation has passed the safe schools uh funding and it, it's gone all the way through they have the funding um to secure these schools 
Um, so mm-hmm. it needs to it needs to come from an administration that this is important. Yeah. How much money are we talking about, Mike? Um, I, I can't. Uh, I know we passed I, I, it for charter schools. Uh, they passed it uh, the last legislation, a, a safe schools uh, funding act that would secure um, all of our schools. And I'll get you that information, Bill. But I don't have that I off the top of my head. I would imagine that would be a fairly sizable. It, it, it is a yeah. sizable amount of money that has yeah. been passed and already appropriated. But um, was this session or last session? I believe session? I believe it was the last session because we we added onto it this session where we added the charter schools into. To that uh, equation where they got some money too. Let me ask the sheriff: Have you seen any evidence of this money being spent, uh, Sheriff, for the hard? No. Okay. No. Nate, and we're talking about a year year down the road. We're talking two years down. You the road. mentioned a moment ago about the door hinges, and the request was made for repair or replacement and denied. Can you give me specifics on that? Was was the request made within the Berkeley County School System for the funding, or for the from the state legislature for the funding? The request was made by the Berkeley to the Berkeley County School System. The request was actually thirty six thousand dollars, and instead of uh, actually uh, instead of approving even half of that, they were denied, not given a reason why they were denied, and given twelve thousand dollars worth of paint. And that's the upsetting part. So, you know, the, the, and look, it, it's no one specific uh, that I'm pointing a finger at collectively. Um, it, it, it's time that we're, we're, you know, I know that they've been advised. I know we've had these conversations, and it, it, it's time to move. Uh, we are literally 10 years behind. If you look at what happened to Sandy Hook in 2012, I still have access points fairly similar um, uh, that uh, if they need addressed. And, Nate, uh, right now I can see that there are at least two members of the school board who are listening to the program I'm not sure if they were aware of this or not, Uh, but if they are, you're telling me that there's the potential of an unsafe school that needs this door replaced. The cost is $36,000, and the decision was made to just repaint the door? Or repaint the hallways, repaint uh, whatever the paint was allotted for. um, I see. I I can say this, that the school board members, um, you know, we've been in conversation in the past, uh, it, it is definitely not any of their faults. Uh, I do not uh, uh, look at the, them. Uh, I, you know, they, they've been uh, very uh, supportive of everything that I've uh, said, and uh, you know, they've been apprised of things they didn't know. And and, and uh, so we've had good conversations. Um, I'm this, this this honestly, my message is to the executive administrative staff. Well, We've had conversations. It's time to move forward. Uh, Sheriff, you've mentioned basically a three-legged stool, the three legs being the SROs, the Guardian Program, and the hardening of the schools. Ideally, you'd go, you'd address all these uh, in lockstep, and we'd solve the problem. We probably will not be able to address in lockstep. Is one of those three of higher concern to you than the others? Yes. Okay, which one? Um, it's definitely the latter it the, is the, the uh upgrades and hardening of uh access control points and i mean we got we got uh you know I, I can't get in too much detail in terms of the exact upgrades uh um but uh i'm talking about upgrades that should have happened five ten years ago we are well, way behind the times um and and uh it would be the the hardening or the upgrades for safety purposes on access control points across the county. Well, I would hope the uh, Berkeley County school system would look into that situation a little more closely now that has been brought to light because that is something that we shouldn't be looking back on a couple months from now going, we knew about it. We should have done something. And I I think you, you've got to look at this uh, big picture. When you look at the big picture, let's say, Nate says, hey, we need, we need 10. Give me 10 school resource officers full-time. Let's say their average salary is $65,000 a, a year. That's $650,000 that we need. Mm-hmm. We have 1,000 positions, I think, what they said, of, of teachers that are, are not uh, – that, that we haven't employed. Um, we have a $222 million budget in Berkeley County out of the education. Um, we can't mm-hmm. find six hundred fifty thousand dollars. That mm-hmm. that's like me 
saying, and my budget is a whole lot smaller. I'm not in the stubble field thing. That's like me <laughs> saying, I can't find enough to get a, you know, a couple of cup, cups of coffee and some donuts for, for my employees a couple of times a week. Well, yeah. and, and I'm not even talking about the CR, uh, SROs here. I'm talking specifically about the mention about the door. Yeah, and the hinge, and that's at thirty six thousand dollars. But what, is what I'm, I'm saying is, we need to look outside the box here, and, and, and it needs to come from the board of education, where they need to do some kind of some kind of funding. The state needs to chip in, and maybe the county does too. It needs to be a joint effort because this is important. Absolutely. But but uh, Mike, earlier you said that last year, year before last, the the legislators passed enough money to harden. The schools to I would it's be, called a safe school funding. But, yes, um, and, and and what would that do exactly? And how much money was allocated? I, I don't. I, again, I don't have the exact specifics. I will get that for you. I didn't realize we were yeah. going into that today, but I will. Uh, I will find out, and I'll find out how that bill works because I know we added on to it yeah. for the charter schools. Um, and but it it is there, and it is for entry, like like Nate was talking about entryways hardening. Uh, I know we passed the. Uh, the, the bond where we, we were doing cameras, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think Nate's right. It's it's about entryways and, and gaining access to schools. Yeah. Nate, thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Delegate Hornby, you hit the nail on the head. It's a collective responsibility by all of us, and I, it's time to take responsibility. So thank you again for, for letting me on. I didn't uh, expect this either, so uh, I appreciate the time and the emphasis on this because kids is – Kids and safety is all of our responsibilities. A- Amen. Amen to that. And uh, in regards to uh, the uh, Board of Education, and I know we do have members in the audience, uh, hopefully you're already aware of the situation. If not, I hope you're aware of it now, at least anyway. I'm, I'm 